Hi, today we're going to talk about named ranges. So this whole discussion kind of starts with the name box. So click on a cell like C11. This is the name box right here and it says C11 because that's the name of the cell. I could give that cell a different name if I wanted to, but it doesn't make a lot of sense. C11 is a perfectly fine name because it's in column C, it's in row 11. Now, that's the name box, tells you basically where you're at. The other thing you can use it for is to create a named range, and we'll get to that in a second. Let's just say I wanted to add up this column of data. There's many ways to write a formula. I'm just kind of going to do it by hand, and I'm going to write equals sum, open parentheses. I like to write ha that part, and then I just click and drag around the range that I want. Close those parentheses. So notice I'm saying I want the sum of D1 through D10, a range of cells denoted by a colon. I press enter, and I have no idea if that's correct, but I don't know why it wouldn't be. So that's one way of writing a formula. Let's do, oh, it doesn't matter. Let's do average down here. Kind of go through that same process. So if I wanted to write this formula, I'd write av right, equals average of grab that range of data and I get something like that. So that's correct, it looks kind of weird, it's because I'm dividing it by 10. So there's another way to do this. So let's say I want to do the sum, the average, the min, the max, the count, and a whole bunch of other things to this data. There's, so if you know you're gonna be referring to a range of data repeatedly, well, what you can do is you can give that data a name. More specifically, we can give that range a name. So I'm going to select this range, D1 through D10, because that was that part I was feeding into my cells. Now, up here in the name box, it says D1. That doesn't mean much. If I click in here and I give this a name like Doug and I press Enter to make it stick, that range is now known as Doug. So, well, well, that's kind of weird. Um, what can I do with that? I can say equals average and I can write Doug. Now, is it easier to type Doug than to write A1 through A10? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Where this really pays dividends is when that range is on a, a different sheet and it's not the kind of thing that you're going to select by hand. But notice I get the same information there. So is that easier or is that not easier? It depends on you. But named ranges are one of those things that if you use Excel a lot, you are going to use a lot of named ranges. So just appreciate this simple example for what it is. Sometimes kind of an interesting thing is you might just have columns and columns of data. I, you're not allowed to name it D because that's already taken. DD also kind of already taken because if you scroll over, you'll see the rows just start repeating. So I try and come up with like a three or probably even a four letter name for the uh, range itself because you can't do anything too simple. I usually try and start the column, uh, the named range with whatever the column starts with. So this is Doug, maybe this one's Eddie, maybe this one's Frank. It's just easier to remember. Um, but there are times where you forget what you named something and you're not sure what you've got going on. That is under the formulas tab and that can be found under the name manager. If you click this guy, you see the named ranges in your workbook and you can edit them, you can delete them, but there are times when you, sometimes you don't know what's there or you made a small mistake when you said it or you just can't remember what's there. So it's worth talking about that as well. So you don't have to use name ranges. Usually it's, it's not like a do or die thing, but they are very beneficial and there becomes a time when they, they become a good friend. So you might as well get to know them now. Thanks for watching.